Today we're going to take a quick look at ArcMap and the basics of the software. When you start the software, the first thing you see is this Getting Started window. It allows us to select recent map documents, a template, or browse for other documents. I have an ArcMap intro document that I've created. I'm going to select it and hit Open. This ArcMap document contains three files, a point file, a line file, and a polygon file. Points, lines, and polygons are what we call vector data. Taking a look at this vector data set, a polygon of Cache County, Utah, you can see that polygons are a series of connected lines that come together to join a closed area. As we take a look at the roads layer, you can see that roads are a series of points connected by lines. This is also considered a network. And finally, we have a point file. A point is a single XY coordinate in space that has a location and likely has some attributes tied to it. Attributes are used to describe phenomenon associated with our data. Looking back at ArcMap, let's look at the basics of the software. Mine looks slightly different than yours will when you open it up for the first time because I've gone ahead and customized mine a little for my own personal use. You can see here we have a data view window. This is where the vast majority of your viewing of your data and your progress is completed. We have a table of contents over here. The table of contents allows us to see each layer and manipulate those layers we can change the drawing order by dragging and dropping them. We can turn them on and off. And we can also change the symbology. Symbology is how we display data. For instance, in our milepost marker, we can see that we have these little yellow dots. Well, I'm going to right click on this. It brings up another context menu. I'm going to go down to properties. This window is the layer properties window, something you'll find very critical. You use it all the time. In this case, though, I'm just going to simply change my symbology. I'll click on this Symbology tab. Note that we have Symbol. We have some other different categories over here we won't talk about just yet. I'm going to click on that, and I have all manner of symbols that I might select. I could even type in here, Mile Marker, and search, and see if there's any symbols that happen to be similar to a mile marker. In this case there's a little cartoon sign or a mile, parse, mile post marker that we might use if we were making a map. I'll go ahead and select that, hit apply, and you can see that my symbology now changes. Whether or not that's easier to see is up for debate, but you get the idea. Likewise, on a line feature, we might want to increase the width and change the color. We have a number of different preset widths and colors here, or we could change and make a custom over here. I'm going to simply select Major Road, which gives it a width of 1.5 and leaves color as black. I'm going to hit OK and Apply. And you can now see that those roads are a little darker and wider. I could do something similar for the counties. Also in our table of contents, you can click here and look at the different types of content listings. We have list by drawing order, which we're viewing now. We have list by source, which tells us where the data is located on our hard drive. We have list by visibility, which is allowing us to turn on and off certain layers for selection purposes. And then we have our list by selection, which tells us if there are any features selected in our data set. On the right, we have a series of docked items. You may or may not have these items if they're turned on or off. If they're not turned on, you can see up here in your button bar that you can turn any of these other items on. In this case, we have Arc Toolbox, Arc Catalog, and the handy search utility that ESRI has provided for the software. Arc Toolbox is where a majority of our tools are stored. The toolbox contains Arc Catalog allows us to manipulate, copy, move, delete, or paste files. It also allows us to look at simple metadata and make connections to other folders or geodatabases. And lastly, over here, we have a search tool that allows us to search for maps, data, and tools. Our drop-down menus are very similar to other menus that you'll see in other software. We have a file menu that allows us to create a new document, save our document, add data, sign into our ArcGIS Online account, uh, export map, and change map document properties. We also can see a list of our recent maps. The edit menu allows us to cut, copy, and paste. View, we can change the view of our data add graphs and reports, pause drawing to refresh our screen. We can create bookmarks, which allows us to zoom to certain spots on our map. We can insert data frames, text, pictures, objects. Uh, we have a selection tool that allows us to select by attributes, locations, zoom to selected features, 
calculate statistics on selected features. We have our most common geoprocessing tools. These are tools that are used to do something to our data. Creating buffers around a vector data set, clipping data, intersecting data, union merge and dissolve are also other common geoprocessing tools. We can search for tools. We can turn on our toolbox here as well as in our button bar, change environmental settings, uh, turn on Model Builder or Python. Also to note, we have the Geoprocessing Resource Center, which is critical when you have questions, concerns about how you're using a tool. We have our customized drop-down, which allows us to customize our toolbars, extensions, and other ArcMap options, and change how our windows appear. And of course, we can access the help system. Looking at our button bars here, many of the same tools are available here that were in our drop-downs, but they're much more handy out on the toolbar. This tool here allows us to change our scale to a standard scale set or a customized scale. We can zoom in or we can choose to zoom out. This button here allows us to zoom to the full extent of all our data. Zoom in, zoom out, fixed zoom in, fixed zoom out. Go to our previous views, go to our previous extent, go to our next extent, view previous features, take measurements, search, find routes, add XY coordinates, and so on. Additionally, what you'll see if you click where there's no other tools on your button bar, you'll see a number of different toolbars that you might up and open up. If I was interested in drawing something, I could click my draw bar. Notice that it appears out here, but I may dock it if I want to drag it in and dock it. I could now go ahead and start drawing polygons if I so desired. And if I didn't want that visible anymore, I could simply close it. The next step is to take a quick look at our different views. This is what we call the data view. Data view allows us an unimpeded view of all the data that we have. We come to the bottom of our screen, we can select these two buttons. We have data view on the left and layout view on the right. We also have refresh and pause. Remember, these views can also be changed up here, data view and layout view. If I select layout view, what we'll see, is we'll see an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. This is essentially what we'll be creating our map on. Now if you wanted to change the size of this, you would go up into your file menu, you would do print and page, page and print setup, and you would change the size of that paper to fit the map that you desire. In this case, my map is zoomed out a bit. And notice that our layout tools have also appeared now that we've come into layout view, so a new toolbar has come up. Well, I can still zoom in, I could still do work and view my data here, but this is generally where we would make our maps. Let's take a quick look at the bottom right of our arc map window. You can see a coordinate pair of numbers with a unit label. These are the XY coordinates of the current coordinate system that I'm in. And this is the units that that coordinate system is being measured in. In this case, this coordinate system is in UTM, or Universal Transverse Mercator, and is being measured in meters. If I had further questions about the projection, I could come into my table to contents, right click on the later's data frame, go to properties, and I could look at the data frame coordinate system information in the coordinate system tab. If I look here closely, I can see it's North American Datum of 1983, Universal Transverse Mercator, Zone 12 North. It's a transverse Mercator projection and a, and a false easting of 500,000. Understanding where the projection information can be found and how to change the projection information is critical to completing any geospatial analysis. So that should give you enough to get started in turning on and off data, playing with data layers, and exploring vector data. Lastly, we need to talk about attributes. Attributes are descriptors of various phenomenon that our data are trying to describe. If you right click on any of your data layers, you can see that there's an attribute table. You click on that attribute table, for instance here we're looking at roads, you can see that we have different names, labels, and a number of different types of information that we may or may not understand. If we don't understand this information, we need to look in what we call the metadata. Metadata is information about our data that describes such things as projection, attributes, and so on. In this case, we'll just look at this label column. If we look at the labels and we scroll down, we see that these labels are giving us the basic information of what the street is called or the number of the street. Notice, if I start selecting records in our table, you can start to see on the screen here that information starts to light up. So these are selected records. Note that each one of these lines is considered a, a record. This is a row and this is a column. Columns have discrete attribute types while rows are records associated with a single piece of geometry properties. 